Chapter 711 Harvest in the Abyssal Layers of Darkness Arrogant at first, humble afterwards The Mystic Realm of the Great Luminescent Sea A figure suddenly appeared at the gate of the Mystic Realm. The marine soldiers guarding on both sides became alert, but their faces turned into awe and reverence upon seeing the newcomer. Lord Ji Chen. Ji Chen nodded slightly, surveying the surroundings. It had been several months since his last visit to the Great Luminescent Sea. The two native hero units of this realm, Sonia and Diago, had already submitted to him, and this place had become the backyard of the crown of the ocean. The ruins where the gate of the mystic realm was located had been utilized and refurbished into a camp and a goods transit station. After a period of investment, the great luminescent sea had begun to thrive. Its products were gathered here from all over and then sent through the portal to the crown of the ocean. Sonia's figure appeared at the entrance of the ruins. The legendary hero gracefully swam in the water. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window.pubfutag.push unit 648C3CC5604323 FFE-1. Lord Ji Chen, greetings. Sonia, the development of the Great Luminescent Sea seems promising, thanks to your trust and support. Sonia stood before him, bowing respectfully. If it weren't for you unifying and bringing peace to this ocean, the Great Luminescent Sea wouldn't have flourished like this. Ji Chen smiled and didn't dwell on it, saying slowly, I want to know about the recent exploration of the abyssal layers of darkness. Of course, my lord, please follow me. Ji Chen followed Sonia to a coral building on the right side of the camp, which seemed to be her usual residence. A clamshell bed, a coral table, and a few stone stools constituted all the furniture here. Compared to Sonia's luxurious residence in the coral palace, this place was undoubtedly very simple. Seeing him looking around, Sonia said somewhat embarrassedly, My lord, in order to monitor the goods input and output, I have been living here. Please forgive the simplicity of this place. Ji Chen waved his hand indifferently, sitting on one of the stone stools, saying, No worries. When I first established the territory, the houses I lived in were much simpler than here. When he first arrived in this world, the entire territory was only about 50 meters long and wide, with only a few simple houses. The Lord's Manor was just a slightly larger dilapidated wooden house, fearing leaks during the next heavy rain. How could it compare to the towering Lord's Castle and the continuous buildings now? Transforming a dilapidated territory into such a prosperous town, whenever he recalled those difficult times, Ji Chen always felt a sense of pride. Sonia quickly began to recount the exploration of the abyssal layers of darkness. Twenty exploration teams had been dispatched to the abyssal layers of darkness, and they had achieved considerable results. They found three ruins storing a large number of resources, an ancient military camp, totaling three million units of rare resources, and ten blank recruitment camps. In addition, six rare resource veins were discovered, two each of crystals, mithril, and adamantite, all of which were large veins, producing 42,000 units per week each, totaling 252,000 units of rare resources. With approximately 250,000 units per week, it amounted to 1 million units a month, and this was a relatively stable income, akin to rent. But what surprised Ji Chen the most was that the exploration teams had also found a giant crystal vein. Although half of it had been mined, the remaining crystal deposits were still a significant wealth. The remaining half of the deposit was approximately 2.44 million units, producing 250,000 units of crystal per week. Now Ji Chen finally experienced the joy of those players who owned large resource points on the mainland. The resources owned by the crown of the ocean were not many. It wasn't until the discovery of the Undergrar, owned lizardmen world that they had stable channels for producing basic resources such as stone and ore. However, High-level resource points like crystals were always scarce, totaling only about a dozen, and they were all small and medium-sized. This became the driving force for him to constantly explore and seek resources. If you don't go out, you'll starve to death. Coupled with the acquisition of 3 million rare resources, the Crown of the Ocean now had a reserve of 7.1 million units of rare resources. It was estimated that in the future, 
they would steadily receive tens of millions of units of rare resources and hundreds of thousands of units of crystals. This figure would also increase as the exploration deepened. Of course, behind these gains, there were also damages. The marine monsters that survived in the abyssal layers of darkness evolved cruel and bloody ways of fighting. Even though they lacked intelligence, they relied on primitive instincts and evolved powerful bodies to kill many marine creatures exploring the great luminescent sea, resulting in thousands of deaths. But the rich harvest overshadowed these bloodshed and deaths. Ji Chen then asked, How has the Starshine Islands been recovering during this time? It has already recovered to the prosperity level before the sea beast tide. It will soon be able to contribute to the crown of the ocean. It had been a considerable amount of time since the sea beast tide ravaged the Starshine Islands. The damage was severe, so he used a large amount of gold coins obtained there as recovery funds, even hiring players to help repair facilities and clean up sea beasts. After these few months, it had evidently recovered. Sonia continued, When you returned to the crown of the ocean earlier, I had already informed Shakas and the others to enter a state of readiness, accelerate the production of escort ships equipped with cannons, large alchemical cannons, ammunition, and output goods, to exchange for resources to support the crown of the ocean. Chapter 712 Harvest in the Abyssal Layers of Darkness Arrogant at first, humble afterwards, too. If their speed is fast enough, they should be able to arrive at the New Moon Archipelago for their duties in the next two days. Jacques was one of the indigenous noble elites who had been subdued by Ji Chen when he pacified the Starshine Islands. Under his long-term indulgence, he had actually become the de facto administrator of the Starshine Islands, or colonial governor, so to speak. Because of the master-servant contract and the presence of a large luminescent sea tribe army, he didn't have to worry too much about rebellion. However, he did hear some unfavorable rumors about Shakas from players in the chat channel, so it was necessary to give him a little reminder during this opportunity to prevent him from becoming too arrogant. Western Mid-Ocean, route from the Starshine Islands to the New Moon Archipelago. Since the Starshine Islands submitted to the crown of the ocean, this route had been developed to facilitate communication between the two regions. Because the crown of the ocean had been included on the elves' friendly list, over time, many merchant ships from the western continent had passed through this route to the New Moon Archipelago, resupplied, and then turned towards countries around the Maple Forest Duchy. At this moment, a medium-sized steel merchant ship was sailing on this route. Shakas stood at the bow of the ship, watching as the steel prow broke through layer after layer of waves, advancing bravely. His face was filled with confidence and vigor. Since the Starshine Islands had been ravaged by the Sea Beast Horde several months ago, and then by a coincidence, submitted to that Lord of Glory, his career had reached an unprecedented peak. Back when he first submitted, he felt like there was no hope, but now he thought the Sea Beast Tide was actually a blessing. If those damned Sea Beasts hadn't come, how could the other nobles and counselors have been so foolish as to rebel against that Lord? and then be shot to death by random arrows. If they hadn't been shot to death, how would the Starshine Islands have ended that endless cycle of bickering among the detestable nobles and council? Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag. Window.pubfuturetag.push unit 64703F9C2E2 pf 463 do dash one It was precisely because of the sea beast tide and the arrival of that Lord of Glory that the rigid structure of the Starshine Islands, which had been maintained for a thousand years, was destroyed, giving Jacques the opportunity to flourish. Thinking back on his past few months, where his words were law on the Starshine Islands, Jacques couldn't help but curl his lips into a slight arc. The taste of power was so wonderful, so exhilarating, that it made his soul tremble, like a king sitting on a high platform, looking down at the masses below, every word and sentence determining the fate of the people. What do you think? How should I ask for rewards from that lord after I arrive at the New Moon Archipelago? After all, under my leadership, the Starshine Islands have recovered so quickly. My contributions cannot be underestimated. 
His servant stood respectfully behind him and hesitated for a moment upon hearing this. Master, I think we should be more cautious and let that lord evaluate it. Not hearing the answer he wanted, Zakaz's face showed a trace of displeasure. Are you saying my contributions are not significant? The servant quickly shook his head. No, that's not what I meant. After all, the Starshine Islands belong to that lord. I know, but without me, how could the Starshine Islands have recovered so quickly? Compared to the era when those nobles and counselors were constantly bickering, it's now more vibrant and prosperous. Isn't all of this because of my contributions? Watching Shaka's grow increasingly excited as he spoke, the servant looked down, trembling, and said, Yes, everything can't be separated from your contributions. With that, Shaka snorted coldly and fell silent, just watching the distant sea surface, where the area of raging winds and storms several tens of kilometers away gradually came into view. As the merchant ship from the Starshine Islands hadn't yet approached the stormy sea area, a silver-white steel warship sliced through the waves and came riding the swells. Cannons stood tall on its deck, and the thick barrels gleamed dazzlingly in the sunlight. Jacques's eyes showed a hint of envy and admiration. The Starshine Islands didn't have the capability to produce such large steel main battleships. Only kingdoms and duchies had the ability to manufacture them. The warship before them, with its sharp angles exuding a sense of sharpness, was indeed the armed force of that Lord of Glory's territory. Whether it was an illusion or not, Shaka's always felt that this warship made entirely of metal was like a living being, with a pair of eyes silently watching them. The ship ahead! This area already belongs to the jurisdiction of the Crown of the Ocean. State your intentions, or I have the right to open fire. A voice came through the horn on the ship. The servant looked at Shaka's. Master! A hint of displeasure flashed across Shaka's face. After all, he was the administrator of the Starshine Islands and an important vassal under that Lord of Glory. These naval soldiers spoke so impolitely. Didn't they see the flag of the Starshine Islands flying on their ship? Tell them we are important guests from the Starshine Islands, here to report to Lord Chen and ask them to make way. The servant nodded quickly and ran back to the cockpit to convey the message. The merchant ship soon responded, and the steel warship ahead paused for a moment. Disarm all weapons and follow my ship into the independent harbor, or you will be attacked by the crown of the ocean's forces. After the broadcast, the steel warship immediately accelerated, leading the way ahead. The servant timely flattered, Master, you are indeed an important vassal of that lord. They value you so much that even the warship is leading the way for you. You flatterer, Jacques laughed and scolded, but the smug look in his eyes revealed that the flattery had worked on him. The warship left after escorting them to the outskirts of the New Moon Archipelago. Following the guidance of the shuttle boat near the shore, they sailed into a water fortress and slowly docked at the pier. Shaka's looked at the servant peering around and couldn't help but curse. You are my servant, representing my dignity. How can you behave like an uncultured bumpkin? The servant quickly withdrew his gaze and showed a flattering smile. Master is right. I can't allow you to get humiliated. Shaka snorted lightly, adjusting his collar, but his eyes couldn't help but glance at the shore. There were continuous buildings, bustling streets with people coming and going, and at the center of the town stood a towering castle with a gigantic building under construction further away. Is this the territory of that noble lord? Just as Shakas was sizing it up, he suddenly saw several residents on the shore looking at them, as if whispering something. What are these commoners talking about? How dare they stare at a noble directly, truly lacking in manners? Shakas frowned, cursing inwardly, but he didn't say anything out loud. After all, this was the domain of that noble lord, and he couldn't afford to cause trouble. He simply regarded these residents as ants on the roadside. With his head held high like a rooster, he disembarked and walked towards the soldiers patrolling the port with his hands behind his back. Shaka's directly intercepted a patrol of lizardmen warriors and arrogantly said, I am from the Starshine Islands. Take me to see Lord Ji Chen. The lizardman soldiers looked at each other, somewhat puzzled, but fortunately the leader of the lizardmen warrior squad said, If you wish to see the Lord, please go to the town hall and find Sir Willis. 
Willis, who is that? Jacques frowned without hesitation. I have impo, or tant matters to discuss with Lord Ji Chen. If you delay me, can you bear the responsibility? Seeing his impolitness, the lizardman warrior leader also froze his expression. If you want to cause trouble, be prepared to be arrested by us. After saying this, he left with the other lizardman warriors without looking back. Jacques gritted his teeth in anger. These despicable lizardmen dared to treat him like this. Once he met with the Lord, he would surely speak ill of these filthy lizardmen and let them know the consequences of offending him. Although angered, Jacques didn't stir up trouble again. Following the lizardman warrior leader's instructions, he first went to the town hall to find this person named Wheelis. Only then did he realize that Wheelis was actually the Minister of Internal Affairs of the Crown of the Ocean, an important figure who had been working closely with that noble lord. He immediately broke out in a cold sweat. He felt fortunate that he hadn't uttered any offensive words just now, or else there would have been trouble. Willis looked at Sakas's unnatural expression and asked, Sir Sakas, are you feeling unwell? Sakas forced a smile and respectfully replied, Thank you for your concern, Sir Willis. I'm just feeling a bit uncomfortable from sitting on the ship for too long. Willis nodded without suspicion and said, The Lord has not returned yet. You may wait here for him. Sakas quickly nodded and bowed. Yes, yes, I'll wait here for the Lord's return. This scene was observed by the servant who had been following him, and a hint of strange expression flashed in his eyes. Chapter 713 Two Months It was already dusk by the time Shakas had the chance to meet Ji Chen. The orange glow of the setting sun slanted through the arched windows of the castle, casting its light on Shakas's anxious face. Feeling the silent gaze of Ji Chen while sitting on the throne, Shakas couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat his hands and feet trembling uncontrollably. On the way to the New Moon Islands, he had been thinking about how to present his achievements to the Lord in order to showcase his contributions to the Starlight Islands. But now, under the scrutinizing gaze that felt almost divine, his mind was blank, overwhelmed by a fear he couldn't suppress, like a mouse facing a cat. Jacques shouted inwardly, wondering why he was afraid when he hadn't done anything against the interests of this lord. But for some reason, he felt a sense of guilt, as if those eyes could see right through him. Ji Chen leaned his cheek on his hand and spoke casually. Shakas, how has the development of the Starlight Islands been recently? Shakas wiped the cold sweat from his forehead and replied in as ordinary a tone as possible, everything is fine. The Starlight Archipelago has now recovered its prosperity from before the Sea Beast Tide. There are also more merchants coming from the Western Continent. The various repair and reconstruction plans you ordered have also been completed with the help of those honored lords. The slums of Starlight City have been replaced by clean houses as per your instructions, and land has been allocated to residents. Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag window pub future tag dot push unit 6c 3c 64 32703f 9c 2f 4th dash 1 how come i heard that you seem to have withheld some of the rewards for the lords of glory and secretly seized a lot of land originally allocated to the poor even secretly taking funds that should have been used for engineering repairs shakas's heart skipped a beat and his back felt cold how did he know about these things he had hidden them so well. Seeing the subtle changes in Shaka's expression, Ji Chen sneered. Do you think that just because I am thousands of miles away, I wouldn't know what happened in the Starlight Islands? I know about everything you've done. Shaka's legs went weak, and he knelt on the ground, crying out for mercy. Lord, it was a moment of foolishness on my part, blinded by those riches. Please forgive me and give me a chance to redeem myself. Ji Chen's face darkened, and he felt some anger in his heart. When he subdued Jaka's before, he still had some doubts, so he sent Sonia over to supervise him in the name of protection, secretly observing whether Shaka's and his men still harbored rebellious thoughts. However, she never uncovered any wrongdoing on Jaka's part, as he diligently followed through with his tasks. Eventually, due to the Lord of the Waves affair, Ji Chen allowed Sonia to return. Then, Shortly after Sonia left, Jacques revealed his true colors. 
according to the complaints and criticisms of players on chat channels and forums, and after sending people to investigate, it was discovered that a leopard couldn't change its spots. In the past, with many nobles and parliamentarians restraining and checking each other, although the development of the Starlight Islands was not rapid, it was relatively stable, barely maintaining a balance of interests. But since Ji Chen broke this situation, Sakas, who surrendered first, became like a wild dog without a leash after there was no supervision. Maintaining a facade of loyalty on the surface, but secretly engaging in plunder and exploitation once again. Damn it, he even dared to use his name to secretly withhold the rewards meant for players. The players of the Starlight Islands feared his identity and could only quietly swallow this loss, but recently some players posted accusations about this matter. As Jakas begged for mercy on his knees, Ji Chen's eyes grew colder and colder. The master servant contract could only ensure non rebellion but couldn't guarantee integrity and effectiveness. The human heart is always hard to control. Lord, even if I haven't contributed, I've certainly toiled. I promise there won't be such incidents again. After I return, I will give all those rewards to the Lords of Glory and return the land to the residents. Shaka seemed to realize his fate, pleading with snot and tears streaming down his face, far from his previous dignified appearance. Ji Chen remained indifferent saying in a flat tone, I already gave you a chance back then. Herman, Kieran, come out. Yes! From the side door, Herman and Kieran, the only two nobles and parliamentarians who survived beside Sakas, walked out. Sakas, kneeling on the ground, turned his head in disbelief, showing an incredulous expression. How could these two appear here? But he quickly realized. Damn it, they're here to replace me. Sure enough, Ji Chen spoke slowly. You two will take over Sakas's work from now on. Don't disappoint me. Yes. The two of them saluted with utmost respect, feeling extremely excited. This was like a pie falling from the sky. They never thought they would have the opportunity to climb to the pinnacle of power in the Starlight Islands. Back then, when Zakas pleaded for them, they thought he was a clever person. Who would have known that as soon as Lady Sonia left, Zakas instantly showed his true colors, thinking he could secretly seize benefits and rapidly expand his ambitions. Little did they know that Lord Ji Chen had long been aware of all this transpiring in the shadows, watching him gradually descend into the abyss. Seeing Zakas in his current miserable state, Kieran and Herman also felt relieved that they had always stayed out of trouble, diligently and honestly doing their work. Otherwise, they might have been kneeling on the ground now, repenting for their sins as well. Chapter 714, Two Months However, what made them feel somewhat uneasy was that compared to the last time, the Lord of Glory now exuded even more authority and superiority, leaving them feeling as if their every thought was laid bare. As Ji Chen's strength and insight grew, he found his eyes becoming sharper and more perceptive. It was easy for him to discern the thoughts and intentions of others, quickly understanding the minds of Herman and Kieran. With a commanding tone, he tapped his index finger on the armrest. I will send someone to assist in managing the affairs of the Starshine Islands. You must cooperate fully in carrying out your work. If I find incidents like Shaka's happening again, you should be aware of the consequences. Herman and Kieran were immediately shaken, responding with trepidation. Ji Chen nodded slightly. He didn't mind having ambitious subordinates, as long as they fully implemented his will. Otherwise, having the ability alone was futile. Amidst cries and pleas, Shakas was dragged away by soldiers, awaiting the dark fate of a life spent in the lightless mines, alongside those who had once violated the Ocean Crown. You must have heard about the demonic invasion, right? Herman and Kieran nodded, with Kieran hesitantly asking, My lord, is it true? Are those ghastly things really about to sweep in? Window.pub future tag, window.pub future tag, window pub future tag dot push, unit 648C34 3273F9C2E2, ID PF 463 1. Of course it's true, I'm one of the discoverers. Ji Chen gave a definite answer, his tone becoming more serious. Once the demons invade, the Ocean Crown will become their primary point of attack in the western mid ocean. 
If the ocean crown falls, there will be no islands or forces in the western mid-ocean capable of stopping the demons, including the Starshine Islands. Do you understand? Herman and Kieran's spirits lifted, exchanging glances and promptly saluting. Please command as you wish. We will fully execute your orders. Leaving aside other matters, these indigenous nobles had quite sensitive instincts, knowing exactly what he meant. I want you to output resources to the Ocean Crown as much as possible in the coming time. Ji Chen paused before continuing. In addition, I want you to quickly send a fleet to the western continent and dispatch people to the K. Kells mountain range to persuade the dwarven tribes living there to come to the Ocean Crown. They were puzzled. Dwarves? Ji Chen glanced at them and continued. Tell them it's the dwarven blacksmith that Mudo who sent them. Though they didn't quite understand these instructions, Herman and Kieran still remembered his instruction, nodding in agreement. We will arrange this as soon as we return. With Ji Chen's orders, Herman and Kieran returned to the Starshine Islands the next morning, accompanied by Raymond, who had returned from the Maple Principality a few days earlier. As one of the early members of the Ocean Crown, Raymond's loyalty and abilities had already been recognized over time, making him capable of managing the affairs of the Starshine Islands. Once the engineering repair plan was announced, the entire New Moon Islands began bustling with activity. Large quantities of resources were transported from the warehouses to various locations on the islands. The construction scope of the island's circular wall was planned, starting from the cliffs in the southeast of the main island, extending along the southern beaches and stretching northwest towards the giant tree forest. This was currently the largest construction project, and once completed, the main island would have a continuous wall tens of kilometers long and ten meters thick. In addition to the main wall, a batch of defense-building blueprints purchased from the merchant lane were also put into use. The positions for arrow towers, spell towers, and cannon platforms had been cleared behind the wall. The residents of the Ocean Crown were all enthusiastically constructing these defensive structures. Perhaps due to the news of F the demonic invasion, the residents united in solidarity, their hearts unknowingly rising a few points again, reaching a high of 99 points, just one point away from fullness. Such high morale brought about explosive work efficiency and enthusiasm. Even if they weren't given anything to eat, the residents of the Ocean Crown could work tirelessly for ten days straight, swinging their hammers until they smoked. He was very curious about what would happen if the morale reached 100 points. Now, he already had the people's support. When the city walls and other defensive structures were completed, they would also have the advantage of terrain. At that time, it would depend on whether the timing would be favorable. Ding, your elven hero, Elysia, has been promoted in tier due to her epic tier talent and long-term training, legacy tier, legendary tier. Ji Chen was stunned, a look of astonishment flashing across his face. Elysia, had she advanced on her own? At the same time, in the jungle to the northwest of the main island, an extremely dazzling orange beam pierced through the clouds and soared into the sky, carrying with it the majestic ancient power that swept across the entire island. Countless trees and vegetation bent and fell, animals in the jungle cowered on the ground, and even thought Mudo, who was toiling away in the underground world, lifted his head. Everyone was stunned. It took a while, while for them to react, cursing. Damn, this kid must have received the blessing of the gods, another damn legendary tear. He considered himself worldly-wise, but he had never seen anything so exaggerated. In less than three days, the Ocean Crown had unexpectedly promoted two legendary tiers. Although legendary tier might not be as prestigious as epic tier, it was not something that could easily appear. A powerful legendary figure was enough to be treated as an esteemed guest by the kingdom, feasting and enjoying the best hospitality. But here, it was like cabbage on the street. If he remembered correctly, Ji Chen already had five legendary tier individuals under his command. This was even more than the previous Black Iron Fortress. Comparison truly is the thief of joy. It took a while for the beam and the imposing aura to dissipate, but it was enough to shock the foreigners who remained on the island, while the residents of the Ocean Crown cheered. They had another powerful protector. 
Following the trail of energy, Ji Chen quickly found Alicia in a clearing in the woods. At this moment, the elven girl was staring blankly at her own palm, as if contemplating something. Alicia. The elf turned her head, the confusion on her face turning into joy in less than half a second as she excitedly ran over. Lord, I've broken through to the legendary tier. Ji Chen opened his arms to catch Elysia as she ran towards him, steadying her and letting her down, smiling. You caused quite a stir, the whole island knows. Elysia scratched her head sheepishly. Heh heh, one didn't control my power for a moment, and it turned out like this. Ji Chen didn't mind. The Ocean Crown no longer needed to hide. The more powerful they appeared, the more fearful those with ill intentions would become. Shifting from strategic deception to strategic intimidation. How did you break through? Elysia looked a bit puzzled, gesturing with her fingers. I was practicing shooting just now, suddenly felt a strong energy surging from deep within me, heard a popping sound, and then I broke through. Ji Chen was slightly astonished, then chuckled and shook his head. My goodness, while others need resources to advance, you just naturally did it. Is this the bloodline of the ancient elves? Regardless, the Ocean Crown has gained another legendary hero, surely adding strength to resist the demonic invasion. Demon Transfer Station Lord Balzarna, we need at most two more months. We'll completely break through the barrier and infiltrate the main world. Very good. Balzarna's eyes flashed with a hint of menace. Once the passage is opened, the vanguard, ill immediately move into the main world, annihilating the enemies nearby and creating an environment for the subsequent army to advance. Yes! Balzarna remembered the human lord who had disrupted his plans and exposed everything. A look of indignation flashed across his face. That damn human lord, once I descend into the main world, I will surely imprison him and use the flames of hell to burn him for millennia to quench my hatred. Chapter 715 Domain City The council chamber on King Kong Island was abuzz with discussion among the guild's top brass regarding recent developments. Boss, the prices on the mainland are skyrocketing, and our procurement plan can only achieve a maximum of 50% completion. Seated nonchalantly at the head of the table, I love black stockings, with her legs crossed, furrowed her brow. Only half? Have you inquired about other islands and archipelagos aside from the mainland and the western continent? We've checked everywhere, but it's no use. The news of demon invasions has had a significant impact. Everyone is on edge. Not only are the indigenous human nations and the elven empire affected, even places like the Silver Islands have tightened their resource exports. Most critical resources are now under strict control. The guild's executives sighed collectively. If we hadn't procured a batch of resources earlier, we might not even achieve half of our plans now. The mood among the guild's top brass was grim. King Kong Island, isolated in the ocean, relied heavily on imports for many resources. With other regions now restricting exports, their situation seemed dire. Without resources, recruitment of military units would be impossible, and the construction of defensive structures would stall. Without troops and defenses, how would they withstand the impending invasion by the demon army? All their resources and efforts were invested in King Kong Island, they couldn't just abandon it and flee. Suddenly, one executive suggested, why don't we seek help from the islander? Window.pubfuturetag equals window.pubfuturetag.pubfuturetag.push Unit 648C3C5043703F92E2EDUIFPF4-0-1 At this suggestion, the others brightened up. That's a good idea. After all, our boss has a good relationship with the islander, we should be able to secure some resources through this. I love black stockings, shook her head. The islander's territory is closer to the south than ours. He is bound to be among the first to be attacked by the demons. Even if our relationship is good, they won't be able to spare any resources for us at such a critical moment. Someone chuckled and whistled. If only you, boss, could use your black stockings to seduce the islander. Who knows, it might actually work. I love Blackstocking's face darkened, and she retorted, If it were that easy, I would have done it already. Do I really need you to tell me? Besides, with the islander's status and power, how could he possibly lack women? Forget about my Blackstocking's. I'm sure even elves are willing to spend a night with him. 
The others nodded in agreement, having heard of the events in the Elven Empire. They were aware of the true identity of Ji Chen, also known as the Islander who possessed Epic Tier power. Epic Tier was the pinnacle of power in this world, a rarity. Yet, they couldn't fathom how the Islander had reached an Epic Tier so quickly. Among the guild's executives, the strongest was I Love Black Stockings, who only had a Legacy Tier profession and had barely reached level 45. They had all arrived in this world on the same day, starting with nothing but a plot of land and a few dilapidated houses. Yet, why had Ji Chen managed to establish a territory comparable to a kingdom's influence and reach the pinnacle of epic tier in less than a year? Comparison is the thief of joy. I love black stockings looked at the troubled faces of the crowd and suddenly had a flash of inspiration, slamming the table abruptly. Thud, I've got an idea. The other guild executives, deep in thought, were startled, their hearts racing, and their eyes filled with resentment. Why did you have to be so loud? I love black stockings coughed awkwardly, pretending as if nothing had happened and said, why are we working so hard to gather resources? The others were puzzled by the question but still answered honestly, to resist the demon invasion, of course. So here's the problem. Where will the demons initially target in the western mid-ocean? According to the current situation, it's highly probable they'll attack the Islander's Ocean Crown first. Exactly. I love black stockings exclaimed excitedly, slamming the table again. Look at it from a different angle. Since the demons will likely attack the Ocean Crown first, why don't we send resources over or even deploy troops to support the Ocean Crown, helping them fend off the demon invasion? That way, King Kong Island won't be threatened. In doing so, We'll save ourselves a lot of trouble, and we can even curry favor. Isn't this killing two birds with one stone? The other guild executives were stunned, feeling a wave of shock. Wow, can you actually play it like this? Because they lacked the means to secure victory and were short on resources, they opted to dispatch troops and resources to the front line. This strategy aimed to ensure the safety of those in the rear. Wait a minute, thinking about it, this approach seemed somewhat reasonable. These guild executives had begun to ponder its feasibility. I Love Black Stockings did as she pleased, abruptly slamming the table again. However, this time it seemed she hit it too hard, and she winced in pain, muttering, That's settled. I'll inform the big boss islander right away. Meanwhile, Ji Chen, accompanied by Willis, was inspecting the progress of various projects in the territory when he suddenly received a private message. He stopped in his tracks and casually opened it. A few minutes later, he closed the chat interface with a strange expression on his face. Willis was puzzled. Sir, what's wrong? I think someone wants to give us a batch of resources and troops for free. Willis? Although he didn't understand what had happened, having more resources and troops was undoubtedly a good thing. Willis didn't dwell on it. He organized his thoughts and deliberated. If the current construction speed continues, all buildings except for the city walls can be completed within two months. However, the construction of the island-wide city walls is too massive. Even with tens of thousands of lizardmen laborers, it will still take at least four months to complete. Chapter 716, Domain City Ji Chen rubbed his chin. Four months is too long. I have a feeling that demons will soon break through the rule barriers and enter the main world. The island ring wall is an important facility for defending against demon attacks and must be completed as soon as possible. What suggestions do you have to speed up the progress? Willis pondered, his face showing a pensive expression. After a moment of contemplation, he said, My lord, I remember that the lord of glory has a kind of power bestowed by the gods which can plan and control the construction of the entire territory. Perhaps we can find a solution there. Ji Chen suddenly realized, which was something he hadn't thought of. He opened the long sealed construction panel under the territory panel page, and the perspective suddenly soared upwards, revealing the appearance of the entire territory. Compared to several months ago, the changes in the crown of the ocean were significant. The buildings that originally only occupied a small piece of land on the southeast of the island had now extended from the southeast to the west, north, and east, except for the dense jungle as the residence of the elves in the northwest. The other jungle areas had been extensively developed. 
Buildings and roads, like a spider web, surrounded the Lord's castle, the heart of the entire island. The streets were bustling, and people flowed like water. Even the northeastern sub-island was connected by a road for access to the Skull Mystic Realm. On the left side of the Lord's Castle lay the port area. Dozens of steel warships were anchored there, along with numerous merchant ships docked in the civilian port below. Additionally, a second port was being built on the southern mudflat. Window.pub future tag equals window.pub future tag. Window pub future tag dot push unit 648C3564B32703F9CE2PF 463 1. Adjacent to the coastline on the left were residential areas, currently separated from the southern sea breeze by a wall that was still under construction. To the north were neatly planned warehouses and workshops. In addition to the neat roads, there were also connecting railways. Several alchemy locomotives were pulling carts of goods, resources, and ore to various parts of the island. On the mountaintops in the northeast, the Featherfolk were using their building talents to build their homes. If one could penetrate underground, they would see many kobolds and lizardmen working hard to mine ore and plant fluorescent mushrooms in the underground world. However, the crown of the ocean was still only a level one borough city. The size of the territory barely encompassed the existing buildings. If it continued to expand westward, it would definitely exceed the range. Although buildings could still be constructed, they would not enjoy the accelerated construction effect of the territory. After staying at level one for several months, the crown of the ocean had long disappeared from the territory rankings. Now, the first place on the rankings was a territory with a level three giant city, but Ji Chen didn't know the player lord. Ji Chen returned to the territory panel and saw that the prosperity of the crown of the ocean had reached over 5 million, almost 6 million. This value was enough to upgrade to a domain city. Domain city, as the name suggests, is the central city of a region with good economic, military, cultural, industrial, agricultural, and even political influence. To upgrade to a domain city, there are many requirements and restrictions. Conditions for upgrading to a level one domain city. Achieved. To upgrade to a domain city, there are eight conditions, each of which was aimed at various aspects of the territory's development. Each condition was not harsh, but together they imposed a high requirement on a territory. However, the system considered different regions of the territory and their emphasis on development directions. Therefore, the eighth condition clearly distinguished different types of territories. Territories rich in agric, cultural resources tended to be agricultural oriented, while those aiming to develop industry require a certain number of workshops. War territories, which relied on warfare for sustenance, had their own corresponding conditions. Overall, it was reasonably fair. However, the Ocean Crown didn't have to worry about these distinctions because it had already met every condition. This indicated that the Ocean Crown was a comprehensive development player. It not only possessed strong military power and considerable industrial capacity, but also achieved self-sufficiency in agriculture. It could even export food to some extent, and its reputation extended overseas and across the continent, maintaining highly friendly relations with indigenous powers like Leinhard and the Elven Empire. Achieving success in every field, he was undoubtedly a versatile player. After upgrading to a domain city, the territory's range would greatly expand, and the island's city walls could then be encompassed within the territory. This would naturally speed up construction. It was a method to accelerate construction progress. Without hesitation, Ji Chen checked the resources needed for the upgrade. To upgrade from level one borough city to level one domain city requires two million units of rare resources. A mere two million units is nothing for the current ocean crown. With a stockpile of over seven million units, completing the city wall construction promptly is a small price to pay. He decisively clicked the upgrade button. Ding, consuming two million units of rare resources, your territory, ocean crown is upgraded to level one domain city. Just like when it upgraded to a borough city, the Ocean Crown's upgrade to a domain city also brought about significant changes. Amid the surprised gazes of the Ocean Crown residents, the Lord's Castle, standing in the center of the territory, suddenly rose and expanded, 
as if an invisible giant lifted it from a height of about 10 meters to 30 meters. At the same time, the surrounding land suddenly rose with numerous secondary fortresses, corner towers, and bastions. Thick city walls sprung up, enveloping the castle within, while trenches and moats sank down, guarding the walls. After about a dozen minutes, the intense expansion finally came to a halt. What appeared before their eyes was no longer a solitary lord's castle, but a cluster of castles, towers, and sturdy walls. Fortunately, Ji Chen had anticipated the vast empty space around. Otherwise, the upgraded castle cluster would have squeezed out other buildings. The territory of the Level 1 Domain City expanded enormously, completely encompassing the entire main island, reaching the easternmost part and even including the last island of the northeastern sub-island, extending deep into the ocean to the south. Territorial range of Level 1 Domain City, 8 kilometers by 8 kilometers. The buff for accelerated construction covered all buildings on the island. Willis looked at the tremendous changes that occurred in just a dozen minutes. Even with mental preparation, he couldn't help but be stunned, then showed extreme respect. The ability to create a cluster of castles with just a flip of the hand, could it be that this person is blessed by the gods? Not only Willis, but other residents of the Ocean Crown also had such thoughts. Even the indigenous people who came to the Silver Moon Islands couldn't help but sigh in astonishment and fear. On the Lord's leaderboard, the name of the Ocean Crown prominently ranked first, with the Level 1 Domain City label being highly eye-catching, and the nearly 6 million prosperity points were incredibly captivating. Ji Chen also didn't conceal his identity, proudly showcasing the name Islander for all to see. Soon, other players discovered this, and the chat channels and forums erupted with excitement. Damn, who the hell is this? How did they suddenly appear at the top of the leaderboard? Oh, it's the Islander. That's fine then. 